FIFA LA FIFA! United Passions. Sounds like an airline-themed porn, doesn't it? No, it's possibly worse. Many claim 2014's United Passions is a garbage propaganda piece for FIFA. Considering all of the scandal the sports association has gone through lately, a lot of people understandably didn't respond well to the film's release. How bad could it be, though? I mean, look at this cast. Gerard Depardieu, Sam Neill, Fisher Stevens. Fisher Stevens? I thought you died after your guest spot on Friends. Wait. Grand Budapest Hotel, that's right. This movie even has Tim Roth in it. Is there anything bad with Tim Roth in it? We're just gonna pretend Planet of the Apes didn't happen for the moment. Okay, maybe it's a propaganda piece, but when you have Tim can hardly do any wrong Roth in it, it must be a good film by its own merit, right? Right? I guess we'll find out. We start with the sudden convergence of random children in, if I were to guess, I would say Africa, maybe somewhere, but I guess who cares because we are only there for a short minute before we suddenly appear to go across the pond to Europe and back in time to the turn of the 20th century, where a man thinks very loudly while writing a letter about football. My fellow Americans, when I say the word football in this review, I am, of course, referring to the sport that we as Americans have randomly dubbed as soccer, international football. If I am going to refer to that other football, I will refer to it as American football. Every day, in countries around the world, new federations spring up. However, without strong ties between them, football in different nations will lack organization. And this is apparently a problem worthy of a lot of attention because if different countries play the same sport but use different rules, vague chaos might ensue. The loud thinker is Carl Hirschman, and he proposes centralizing all of the football federations around the world so that the game is played by one single set of rules. England is apparently the country to convince because they invented football, apparently. Football may be a gentleman's game, but it is a man's sport. There are things much more important than life and death. There's football. I see. It's gonna be one of those movies, is it? Who needs conflict or plot? We have football. Nothing against football, but it's one thing to watch football and another to watch stuffy old men talk about football. Hirschman and his buddies want England to join their International Football Federation and will even make the previously shouting guy the president of it. But if not, they will exclude England from all international matches. What international matches, as you say, England might be excluded from? Cups, tournaments, championships, we, friendly we, games? We don't know yet. Well, this was a well thought out threat. What rules do you intend to add to the 13 which already exist? So wait, there is a universal set of rules already? Then why do we need to federate? We just do? Okay. Stuffy Brit guy snubs them because they don't exist yet. Which is kind of weird because isn't that the good part about joining an organization at the ground level like that? So you have a say-so in the fundamentals of the group? No? Okay. Let's see what kind of advice one can expect from the apparent guru of British football. Gentlemen, you must gain possession of that ball. Retain possession of that ball and then shoot. Well, I could have told you that. Well, they want to run the world of football, sir, in place of us. <laughs> How ridiculous. What do foreigners understand of our beautiful game? This is serious, huh? So representatives from a bunch of other European countries get together and decide that they are the only ones authorized to run football games in their countries or the games they might play in other countries. After the most dramatically boring election for Robert Guerin to be president, the big question is posed. But above all, what will we call our federation? I know. Will be the Fédération Internationale de Football Association. FIFA. Yeah. My friend. We are FIFA. FIFA! 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 Brilliant! Viva la FIFA! I love football. So do I. And I believe in this. I believe that the whole world should play football by the same rules and regulations. In case you were not aware of the central plot up to this point because you zoned out before this, which would be understandable, 
So this movie is about the organization of FIFA and now FIFA is organized. We're done, right? We're actually less than 10 minutes into the movie at this point. Years later, Uruguay is having a press conference talking about how they are the world leaders in football because they won a couple of matches. This guy argues about different countries that were not represented and therefore they cannot say they are world leaders. This guy is Jules Ramey and he is, at this moment, the new president of FIFA. What got into you, my friend? I have never seen you in such a state. Have you lost your mind? Oh, Fisher, I hope this performance is not on your demo reel for so many reasons. It turns out Ramey made the commotion to get publicity for FIFA, which is still obscure despite being around for 20 years at this point. Yeah, because no one knows us now, that's for sure. I'm going to check out this nun before she finds out who we are. A world championship. It took you 20 years to come up with that idea? He's mad. No. He's a visionary. Oh, dear God. Okay, movie, you haven't really given us a reason why we should care if FIFA is formed or not at this point. Is FIFA going to bring about world peace? Will it make it possible for countries all around the world to come together and play a common sport? Wait a minute, they're already doing that because Uruguay beat most of them already. So if there's not going to be a real central conflict or any action sequences or at least cute guys to drool over, you need to give us a good reason why we should want FIFA to become a thing. Spoiler alert, they never really do. Their plan to get into the papers with the outburst fails. He gets a letter from the ambassador to Uruguay from Brussels. In five years, they want to celebrate Uruguay's 100th birthday by organizing the world's first football championship. They are willing to pay to build the 100,000-seat stadium to host it, so they partner with the unknown FIFA to make this happen. Three years after that conversation... The first world championship will take place in 1930, in a country yet to be determined. Except you already determined that Uruguay is going to host it because they came up with the idea and are building a stadium for it and stuff. Another year later, they finally vote on it and conveniently, the first World Cup will be in Uruguay. The suspense was killing us. A random conversation between Ramey's daughter and this racist, sexist motherfucker is, I guess, supposed to tell us that the entire world is racist and sexist, and FIFA is revolutionary because they are not. At least, that seems to be what they want us to take away from this otherwise pointless scene. They're asking this guy to design the trophy. He understandably says, I need money to do that. They don't seem to want to pay him, and then finally they do. So now the message is that FIFA is respectful of African races and women, but not of struggling white male artists. Strange takeaway, but okay. So they're building the stadium, everyone's getting excited, players are working out on board a ship, they take a picture, Ramey feels guilty spending money on football with the depression going on in America. Okay, this is boring. The dialogue is boring. Basic. And I don't mean basic in the she's so basic. I'm saying it's mind-numbingly simple and not well-written and doesn't sound natural at all. Where is Tim Roth to spice things up? They have the first World Cup, all of the papers around the world write about it, and now there is an all-encompassing set of rules and football championship just like Hirschman wanted at the beginning of the film. The end? No. This is a half hour in. The movie's almost two hours long. God damn it. Apparently, Hirschman had invested FIFA's money in some bad stocks when the crash happened, and now, a year after the first World Cup... We've lost everything. But they let me keep this chair so you could walk in on a dramatic scene. Wait a minute. The crash was in October of 1929. He waited until 1931 to tell anybody? It took two years for FIFA, unknown and probably broke during the crash, to have financial issues? Hirschman feels bad and quits FIFA. Ramey says no. Hirschman says too bad. Mon ami. Okay, did they really need to translate that? We Americans can be pretty self-absorbed and not bother to learn other languages, but we all know what mon ami means. Even if we didn't, the sentiment's obvious without the translation. It's actually distracting and almost insulting to put the translation up there. 
The racist, sexist guy turns out to be the German rep for FIFA, and of course he is defending his country's political position in the upcoming World War II. Remet's daughter gets mad because they're arguing politics and not letting football keep them together. Remet says he's thinking about resigning. Tim Roth, where are you? Fast forward a few years, the papers are talking about Stalin and Nazis, and they talk about the infamous and controversial death match between Germany and Ukraine, which, by the way, true or not, would make for a much better film. 1950 in Rio, the British invite the FIFA guys to their game between Brazil and Uruguay, which, after a build-up, Uruguay wins, and this is incredibly tragic for some reason. I don't know, maybe there was something I zoned out for. God damn it, Tim Roth, I'm counting on you to save the bad writing and editing. Remet dies. Yep, bummer. Is Tim Roth the next president? No, Mr. Havilange, am I saying that right? Um, Sam Neill here is. Yeah, he couldn't make the movie any worse. Sam Neill is apparently Brazilian? Sure, he he's kind of trying this nondescript accent. Sort of. Okay, no, I'm not buying it. Anyway, he wins the presidency after a thrilling vote counting scene. Those people will never understand the subtleties of football. This guy is, of course, talking about the African representatives. I'm sorry, the fact that anyone ever thought that way was bad enough. The fact that people do still think that way is just downright embarrassing. Finally, Tim Roth shows up. Now it should get interesting. Apparently, money is still tight for FIFA. Havilland demands results in finding some in an as uninspiring as it is short speech. So this is our chance, seize it. Walking with a sandwich in his mouth, good. A little bit quirky. Now, something inspiring. Okay. Tim Roth, playing Mr. Blatter, is frustrated that Havelange didn't tell them to go after sponsors for World Cups, but instead to hit up, I don't know, world leaders or something. That's when, conveniently, someone tells him, hey, there's an executive from Coca-Cola over there. I think you might be interested. Nah, they're not football fans. Where are you going? Can't hurt to try. So what about this match? Yeah, I need someone, someone for that. Germans are really good, yeah, but... Yeah, yeah, Germans are good. Yeah. I heard it. Tim Roth was going to do his smart-ass, sometimes smarmy thing, and Coca-Cola was going to get talked into sponsoring, and, and you cut before the scene starts. You have to give Tim something to work with if he's going to have the ghost of a chance of saving your movie. So Blatter talks to this guy from Adidas, uh, what we Americans know as Adidas, in a not-at-all shady-looking meeting in a random parking lot, and this guy promises a big contract between FIFA and Adidas if FIFA makes the Adidas ball the official football of the World Cup. I hope the president likes it. Yeah, we all hope that the president likes this guy's balls. I mean, what? The Africans are waiting for us to take a stand on apartheid. Apartheid was basically extreme racism that South Africa implemented through Jim Crow-like laws between the 1940s and the 1990s. At the time, many countries condemned South Africa and these laws by banning the country from many international activities, namely sports. So if FIFA hasn't made any decisions about this, maybe this is where some conflict comes in. We already took a stand 12 years ago when we suspended South Africa. Oh. Well, never mind, I guess. So this guy is mad because something. They feel African nations are not being represented fairly, maybe, or not involved. I don't know. They don't really make that entirely clear. So Blatter is about to make a speech that rallies the African nations for FIFA. Let's go, Tim Roth. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. In the name of FIFA... I'd like to thank you for your kind invitation. I give up. I, I just, I give up. South Africa will not be welcomed back into FIFA until it has settled the issue of apartheid. Exactly. Because football brings consolation to all tragedies and sorrows. We organized the World Cup for juniors. We 
found this new god to worship. That's an amazing little Maradona. Now we are back in Africa. You should be concentrating on the women's teams. They are um, going to name you Secretary General of FIFA. You're going to be number two in the biggest football organization in the world. Speaking of number two, it's too bored. I can't finish that joke. We need money. We need a great deal of money. Congratulations, Mr. Secretary General. The slightest error on your part, and you're out. A while ago, when it was time to pay our personnel, the accountant announced that there was nothing left in the coffers. I want you to replace me. I'm not responsible for what might have happened prior to my presidency, which you choose to call embezzlement. Considering the state of FIFA's finances, Mr. President, the wages of your 200 collaborators cannot be paid this month. When are you going to do something to defend yourself? I've done nothing that merits defense. You could go to prison. You've been betrayed. Who's the traitor? We are asking you one last time to resign. I refuse. Elected by 139 votes, Joseph Sepp Blatter. South Africa. So why is this film in the dumpster? So many reasons. The most lengthy and talked about reason being that it painted FIFA officials in a completely innocent and noble light, despite the fact that surrounding the film's release came allegations, investigations, and even arrests of several FIFA members involving embezzlement, bribery, money laundering, fraud, and other financially related crime charges. Blatter was expelled from FIFA as well as 11 of the 13 ethics committee members. Maybe the film should have been more about those charges and investigations because the biggest crime besides being possibly not true or painting people in a better light than they should be painted? This film is boring as hell! There is so little conflict to make you care about anything going on. Every scene's like, we need to do a thing. Here's this guy to do the thing. Yay, the thing's done! Any scenes with any potential conflict astonishingly cut away before anything actually happens. The dialogue is absolutely horrendous, the editing nonsensical, and the acting... Clearly everyone is phoning it in because they know it's going to suck. Even Tim Roth, the one hope this movie had, is reported as saying he only accepted the role because he needed the money to put his kids through college. I want my tip. Shut up, Dwight. Not that Dwight, that Dwight. Basically, this is a propaganda piece about history that nobody asked for and it's poorly executed. Not even in a so bad it's good at least when you're drunk kind of a way, it's just boring. It's not truthful enough for those interested in FIFA's origins and it's not interesting enough for anyone just wanting to watch a good movie. Don't have anything to do with this film, unless you enjoy watching movies with such bad dialogue that it's embarrassing right before you doze off out of complete boredom. I really want to end this review by kicking the DVD like a soccer ball, but I feel like that would end badly. I mean, it's just very simply written and not taking any thought to process. I don't know what I'm saying.